Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the fundamental concepts of software testing. We are in chapter four talking about the test design techniques. And now today we'll be looking forward to the next segment which is 4.3 white box test techniques. And here we'll be covering techniques which are helpful at unit testing level and mainly for the developers when they try to test some of the simple codes right at the unit level. On a very high level, given that it is something specific to developer, but when it talks about unit testing, we are also supposed to understand that what these techniques are all about. But given that you are going to be a black box tester, maybe it will not be a key responsibility for you to perform any kind of unit testing or apply any kind of white box test techniques. But given that when you call yourself as a tester, it would be very crucial if you have a good understanding of what are the other techniques which can be applied at the unit testing or white box levels, right? So given that we are talking about the very first technique called as statement testing, where statement testing is basically the measure or it is the test which covers or tests all the statements for a given fragment of code. Now, of course, we are talking about white box testing where a person should have the knowledge of development, knowledge of coding standards in order to perform the same. Now, on the other hand, when you say the testing uh, statement testing can also be called as statement coverage, but it's not necessary that the definition would remain the same. Generally, the statement testing is the process of performing these activities or applying the technique, but the measure which you perform during this particular technique is called as statement coverage. Now, statement coverage is the percentage of statements executed by the given test for a fragment of code. Now, for an instance, the example here, that is the execution, the you know, formula which is provided here is what we just defined to you. A statement coverage is measured as number of statements executed or covered by the test divided by total number of statements in the given fragment of code multiplied by 100. So for an example, if a particular code had eight statements in the given fragment of code, then which your statements are covered by what number of test cases, right? So the point here is, if I had eight statements and I have written four tests which cover six out of them, then we have covered 80% of the statement in the given code. Please listen to this again, if in case you think you got missed out somewhere else, right? So the point here is, if a particular given fragment of code has around eight statements in the given code, then we have written four tests, for example, to test this particular code, we may have covered only six out of 10 which gives me an 80% statement coverage due to the limited number of tests. If you write another one test, maybe it covers the remaining two statements and gives you 100% code coverage. So at any point, the number of tests recent, written and exercised on the given fragment of code will return you the percentage coverage, which means statement coverage on a particular fragment of code. Let's take a quick example to understand what we are trying to tell you right here. Number one, you're taking a sample example, which is a pseudocode, and we are trying to explain you with a very simple example that what a statement testing technique is all about. Because don't forget, the technique is not to measure the coverage. Technique is to measure the number of minimum test cases required to get the 100% coverage on the given fragment of code. So assuming there is an example here called as read A, read B, if A is greater than B, then B is print A is bigger, else print B is bigger. And I tru truly understand no matter you come from a non-IT background or non-technical background, everyone understands a very particular condition that if I have a condition, it has two outcomes. That is either it is true or it is false. If it is true, it is subjected to do something. And if it is false, it is subjected to do something else. So just for an instance, if I tell you that go to the shop, if shop is open, buy me a pen, otherwise come back home. Now I have given you true and false, both of them. So you will reach there and if the shop is open, you'll buy a pen. If in case the shop is closed, which is the false statement, you will come back home, right? So we are just trying to convert this fragment of code into this flowchart, what we generally do. 
And here, if you see, the black boxes here are generally referred to as statements or nodes, which are in the flowchart. So each line actually written on the left is a node or a statement for me, right? So this statement has to be covered with minimum number of test cases in order to have the complete coverage. And just for instance, if I have to take two different paths, or assuming that I take the first path, which is in green in color, which is covering the maximum number of statements in my fragment of code, but misses out the node B, which is a false statement. Because by any chance, one test will only give me 50% coverage, or it is giving me some percentage coverage more than 50, but does not have 100% coverage. But what is our objective? Our objective is to have minimum number of test cases, which gives you 100% statement coverage. So in that context, we would need one more test, which is test two in the blue color, which is going to go alternatively through the false statement covering the remaining statement. So the conclusion here is with minimum of two test cases, I can achieve 100% statement coverage for the given fragment of code where just two test cases can cover all the nodes in the given diagram. And that's how we achieve the minimum number of test cases required by this technique to perform the 100% statement coverage. I hope this makes it very clear and very understandable to you. If in case you think there's any further clarification, feel free to drop a comment below. So that's all from this particular video team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to respond to your queries and help you out. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.